Gold, the precious yellow metal, got hit particularly hard this week when treasury yields reached highs that they haven't seen in 15 years. As anyone who doesn't like gold will tell you, the problem with investing in gold is that it has no yield. So when you're holding gold, the only way you make money is if the price of the underlying asset goes up. Because of this, I also choose to invest in the gold miners. Unlike gold, the miners do typically provide a yield, so you can get a dividend and exposure to gold. However, just like the companies in the energy sector, any company that has any association with gold will find its own stock price correlates to the price of gold. So when gold goes up, the stock price goes up, and when the gold price goes down like it did this week, so will the stock price. Another issue is that the miners actually magnify the move of gold. So when gold goes up, they typically go up more. However, like this week, when gold goes down in price, the miners get hit even harder. I have several gold positions, so naturally I added to all of them this week, including Newmont Mining and the Sprott Physical Gold Trust. But in this episode, I wanted to focus on Barrick Gold because I've never talked about this company before. And it has the coveted ticker of all time for the space, gold. G-O-L-D. Barrett Gold is a Canadian-based miner, and it even has a decent yield at 2.63%. It's often considered the best in breed in the space and is one of the larger of the senior gold miners. Gold bugs will tell you that thanks to the high interest rates and the significant amount of debt that the global economy has seen, that gold will one day break out and skyrocket to new all-time highs. However, they've been telling you this thesis for more than a decade now, and gold has been trading in a very strict range, even though it did make a slight all-time I'm high this year. I like having exposure to gold for two reasons. A, the gold bugs might be right and it could reach a new all-time high. But also, gold is cyclical, where it makes new highs and goes back down and sells off again. So even though these are long-term holdings for me, I will take profits when they start to reach levels of resistance they've seen in the past. I won't sell the entire position by a long shot, but I have found it's wise to take something off the table because it probably will turn around. Eventually, if the gold bugs are right, it won't find resistance and these stocks will go higher. So I'll just have a small position. But in the meantime, I'm able to lower my cost basis by buying at a cheap price and then selling at an expensive one. I made my most recent buy on September 27th, buying 1.48% of the allocation at $14.99. Like I said, because these stocks are so volatile, I don't buy in large quantities and I don't sell in large quantities either. This buy locked in a 24.1% discount on shares that I sold on May 3rd at $19.75. And I will continue to add if Barrett continues to sell off. Its low in 2022 was right around the $13 mark, so my next buy target is at $13.14. And as you can see, Barrick's 2023 high was just above $20, so my next profit-taking target is at $19.77, where I will trim some of the position. 